Lesson 5.4, Factoring of Polynomials. Uh, you should have seen a lot of this before in Algebra 1. If not, you need to go back and look up some websites to see what you can do to make up the lost ground. Because this is going to move very, very quickly. First one is what I call <clears throat> simple factoring. We see what's in each term. In this case, there's definitely a 2 in each term. And x in each term and a y in each term. And a lot of people get confused. They just cancel it all out and throw it out. It's not. We're just rewriting it in a separate way as if we were anti-distributing it, anti-foiling it. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. So the first term is 3xy. Second term is just y. Last term is 3x squared. And we look at it and say, if I distribute this, I'd get 6x squared, y squared. If I distribute this, I'd get negative 2xy squared, so on and so on, 6x to the third y. So that way we know we've done it right. That's our check for this process by going forwards and backwards. We call this greatest common factoring. A greatest common factor for the GCF and you should always look for this first um, if there's something you can pull out it often makes the problem a lot easier a lot clearer if you don't remember to do that you'll look at it and say I'm confused I don't even know where to go with this so these are trinomials now and yes we're flying through factoring if this is your first time you need to go back and look out look up uh, what you're supposed to do in algebra one i teach these a lot of different ways but the bottom line is what multiplies to 20 adds to nine and you would say well five and four and if you wanted to you could foil all this out and check that it works so five times four is 20 five plus four is nine it works over here is a little trickier Uh, I've done this before, so I happen to know that 18 and 3 multiply. 3 times 8, 24, carry 2 is 54, negative 54. Negative 18 plus 3 is negative 15. And then I purposely left this one till last because it looks like it's going to work. It looks like it's x minus 7, x plus 2, but minus 7 and plus 2 do not multiply to plus 14. So this one's a trick question. This is what we call prime meaning it, it doesn't factor. And uh, those are the worst problems because there's no easy way to see that it's prime. You have to play with it for a while and see where it takes you. This is called grouping. And you generally know you have to group when you see four terms. And you do GCF twice. You do the first two. There's A to the third. Pardon me. A squared. A squared leaves you with A minus 4. And then you see what you have to pull out to make it work here. It looks like 3. And that leaves A minus 4 here. And you know you've done it right if you're left with the same thing inside the parentheses. So now we factor out the A minus 4. We pull it out. It's in both terms, just like we were factoring other stuff. And we're left with A squared plus 3. I see a squared, so let's check out if we can factor that. If we can't, we're done. And you always got to double check when you're done. Is there more factoring I can do? So here we pull out a 2z, and we get 2z leaving 4y minus 3. And over here, I think if I pull out a negative 3, it'll work. So minus 3. That leaves me with 4y minus 3. It worked. Because I have the same thing inside the parentheses. Again, you can always go back and check by multiplying it out. That's grouping. This is what I call complex trinomials. It's just my expression. I don't believe that's a common math thing and it's basically where the a value does not equal one so 
five here and the two here cause problems. A lot of people do these different ways. A lot of do guess and check. Uh, guess and check would look something like this. Well, it's got to be 5x and x. It's got to be 3 and 2. Try it, try it, try it. Oh, wait, no, that works. No, it doesn't. It's minus is plus. No, wait, it's 6 as well. And they just play with it. I don't like that because I may never get the answer. I might be playing with it for hours and never figure out where I'm going. I like to do this. 5 times 6 is 30. What multiplies to 30 and adds to negative 13? Negative 10 plus negative 3 and negative 10 times negative 3. So I rewrite the middle term. And then I'm grouping. Five x, x minus two, negative three, x minus two, if you're curious, I grouped that one differently where I wrote the x minus two second instead of first, it does not matter. So over here, two times negative seven is negative fourteen. What multiplies to negative 14 and adds to 13? Looks like 14, positive 14, and negative 1. So now things have gotten a little busy here, so let's divide it up. 2b squared plus 14b. Minus B minus 7. Actually, I'm going to start shortcutting this. 2B, B plus 7, minus 1, B plus 7. 2B minus 1, B plus 7. So that's complex trinomials, A value not equal to 1. Now the special cases. I'm going to throw one up here. X squared minus 4. Now this is a difference of two squares. What you do is just go plus minus. Take the square root of the front. And if there's a number out front, you have to do that too. So, for example, 2x plus 9, 2x minus 9, foil it out and check that it works. You'll see that the middle terms vanish. Now we do what's called a perfect square. It's a lot like the difference of two squares, but they're the same. And you could even write this like this. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. I'll come back to that. The third one is a cube. This is straight memorization. There's no simplistic way to do this. You take the third root, you get x. Take the third root, you get 3. And then you just write it. It's x minus 3. Minus comes down, and the rest will be positive. X squared, mash them together, 9. Same thing on X to the third. We have X, and we have 3. X plus 3, and then X squared minus 3X plus 9. So, this is called a perfect square trinomial.
and this is called the difference or sum. two cubes. Here's a couple problems for you to try. And here's the difference of sum of two cubes. That's difference, that's sum. Memorize them. No easy way to do it. Remember what I said, pull out the common factor first. So you get 3x, leaves me with y squared minus 16 and then see if there's anything else you can do to it in this case we have the different two squares over here we clearly have a sum of two cubes so this one will be cd this one will be three so it's plus so we write plus then we get c squared d squared minus 3cd plus 9. Practice, 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 practice. And I gave you a lot of practice. And finally, how would you simplify this? So you look at it and you say, hi, I'm dividing polynomials, long division, synthetic division. Well, before we do that, one of the many reasons we factor, so we can simplify things. Look at this, we go, oh, that's x plus three, x minus one. That's x plus four, x plus three. Then we realize, hey, neat, I cancel. I'm left with x minus one, x plus four. Don't forget, x cannot equal negative four, negative three. That is about it. There's a lot of material in this one unit, so make sure you practice. Good luck.